mention that this is Mardi Gras week. So in uh, this is the week that's meant to celebrate the past and the future of Mardi Gras, and we kind of think of a better way to do so. Um, speaking of the future, if you are a junior and would like the opportunity to be part of uh, a group with such long-standing tradition, um, be on the lookout because we will be sending out applications for membership for next year um, coming up in March. Uh, Although only students who are going to be seniors academically are allowed to apply for the membership, um, we are also starting what's called um, the Mortar Board Sophomore of the Year Award. And there will be a $100 scholarship for the person who wins that. So um, those applications will also be going out in March. So if you are a sophomore, be looking for that. Um, my final announcement is um, in regards to our last lecture um, of our final last lecture of this academic school year, um, which will be with um, Dean Bob McMath. And so be kind of on the lookout for that. That'll be sometime at the end of March, beginning of April. So now I have the honor of introducing our speaker for the evening. He has been at the University of Arkansas for 32 years, and he has touched more than 25,000 students while he's been here, more than 31,000 in total. I have had the privilege of having him in class, and I know I am a better marketing student and a better person because of it. He has been the recipient of countless awards and honors, and if I had to describe him in one word, it would be remarkable. That being said, I don't think there are enough words to give him a proper introduction. So without further ado, please join me in welcoming Dr. Doug Ashton. I think that when I think about what I have to do every day, it's real stressful. And I 
very hard to kind of set objectives of where what you want to do. So many of you I have done advising for, and you, you know you're going to be an accounting major, a marketing major, a management major, and God forbid an economics major, you know, one of those types of things. And you decide quite commonly when you're 18 years old what you're going to do when you're 60 years old. I said, I can't understand that. So let's see if I can give you some pillars that will kind of answer some questions for you in the 45 minutes that I have to talk with you about maybe the importance of life and maybe kind of who I am because of who you are. So I'd like to be able to do that. I think the best way to start this off is with a very easy concept of saying it looks good kill. Because I grew up in a household where my mother not only had looks, but she had a baseball bat. She used to hit me with that an awful lot, too. And I'm not joking with that. That's absolutely true. Now she's 96. I take her every night and slap her around once in a while. She can't do that because she can't walk. But the best part about having her with me is she describes the sticker that's on my uh, rearview mirror as her cripple sticker. That's how she describes it. So I have the advantage of her cripple sticker sometimes. And one of my wife lets me have it. There, uh, there are four basic questions that I'd like us to address tonight in the 45 minutes. Hey, Robert, uh, that I'd like to address. Number one, what are the basis of my behavior? Me. Don't look internally. Me. What are the basis of those behaviors? Second consideration I'd like to have is what is the content of that behavior for me? You know, who I am. And, you know, you guys don't know how old I am, but I will tell you that Jesus Christ did sit behind me in the third grade. I'm an old guy. Third consideration is what is the meaning of my behavior? Especially to you. Especially to you. And we're going to talk about that tonight. And the fourth thing that I'd like to talk about, if I'm up here, is to let you know that I am accountable for my behavior, just as you are hopefully accountable for your behavior, too. It's good to see you. I haven't seen you in a while. You're on your internship, right? Mm -hmm. That's why I see you. Hello, Stacia. Hey. See, but I know all of you. This is great. You know, Father's Day is not far away. I'd like to have parts moment. I'll have Father's Day. So before we start, I want to tell you a little bit of a story. I have uh, over here some, uh, some rocks. This is a really good story. I noticed most of you didn't pick up rocks, but if those had been $10 bills or gold pieces, would you have picked up at least one? The story kind of goes like it's a parable. It's a biblical parable. And this individual, this traveler, was lost in the desert. And while he was lost in the desert, an angel appeared before him and said, don't worry, you'll get out safely, but I have to ask you as you go through the desert, pick up all of the rocks that you can find. Now, it doesn't have any water, so why would you go picking up rocks? Can you imagine like this? And he says, you know, what are you doing? So he starts picking up rocks because the angel told him to do that. As he got further and further along, it was harder and harder for him to be able to uh, carry those rocks. So you know what he did. He discarded the rocks. He threw them off. At the end of the period of time, he actually got to the very end of his travels and met up with someone, and they, and they kind of explained what was going on, and he looked in his pocket and pulled out the rock, and the rock had converted to gold. Had he known that all those rocks would convert to gold, would he have held on to them? Would he? Well, those rocks are kind of my goal. Each one of you who has one of those rocks, and please get one before you leave, it's called an eternity rock. It will last for eternity. I hope it will. Because those rocks represent for me my relationships with all of you. And it's nice when you can have people come in who come in from work from Tyson's, who come from work from Procter and Gamble's. I don't know why you're here, but I really do appreciate why you're here. But you're my rocks. You, our relationship that started off with nothing has turned into a very golden opportunity for me. And so I cherish my rocks. I'm going to hold on to my rocks because I appreciate those rocks and they remind me. It's so wonderful to be able to think that I have this collection that no one can ever take away from me. And Paige, I will always remember you <coughs> sitting in the back row of the class, tweeting or whatever you were doing in the back row. <laughs> I, can, I can point fingers to have you who've done that all the time. But the important thing that I like to say about those rocks is they are symbolic. They're symbolic of relationships. Those rocks are really, really old. They're older than I am. But they last for a long period of time. And it's amazing how people, out of choice, will pick the real shiny rocks. And they're not rocks. They're glass. They were just made last week. But the rocks have been around forever. And I think the thing that we have to do in lives, in our lives, is build relationships, Rachel, that last forever. The longest relationship that I have here in this classroom. 
classroom and he's sitting right here with Dr. Robert Brady. And his daughter sitting next to him, and I had a great opportunity on December the 28th, I think 1989. 1990? 1990. I got the, the date a little bit wrong, but I do have December the 28th when uh, Sarah and Elizabeth were born. And I, I, I appreciate that very much. And over on this particular end over here, I have Stacia Hoffman, and I've been around since the moment that she was born. In fact, I'm her godfather. As she describes me, by the way, her fairy godfather. I don't know if I fairy in there at all. No. But I'd like to tell you more about this and about the rocks, because it's going to end up at the end. I, mean, I hope we'll pick up a rock and keep it. Uh, they are eternity rocks. Let's see what we come up here. Okay, what are the basis of my behavior? Well, I think the basis of my behavior overall are probably, come on, experiences. I've had a lot of experiences in my life that have been very positive. Uh, I think one of the best experiences I had is when I was uh, quite a young child and I lived in a place called Iran, Mississippi, with my grandparents. My mother and father were all doing whatever they do. And I learned to live on a farm. I learned to get up at 3.30 in the morning. And you had to get up before the sun got, came up and you had to work throughout that day to make sure you had something of value when it came to the wintertime and you couldn't grow things. So we grew with everything that we ate except sugar, salt, and flour. Everything else we did ourselves. But the experiences I've had, the most recent experiences that I've had have been really important to me. And I have been able to travel the world with Bob Brady and with Molly Graver. Uh, let me see who else is in here that I've seen. Molly's back over here in the back. But I've been able, when I say travel the world, I mean we've been on several continents together to be able to teach in the military area. So we teach people how to kill, so you don't want to screw with us. <laughs> so the experiences, that's the same thing with you. I have another friend in here that I've been a friend with since 19, I think it was 93, it may have been 1992. I met his daughter at five. Uh, he's not an American. I think he is, overall. But he's from Moscow, in Natalia, Russia. Natalia over here finished his master's degree. He's finishing up his PhD now. His daughter got her undergraduate degree here. I guess Olga's going to come to school here too, is that right? Probably. She can live with me if I'm still around. All right. So experiences tend to shape the mold and polish us. And you're my experiences. You are the craftsman who have made me. The 31 to 32,000 students that I've had in my life have shaped, mold, and polished me in so many ways to refine me, to recognize that my behavior breeds your behavior. How I behave toward you determines how you behave also toward me. So we'll go back to experiences a little bit later. I don't want to say anything real long. People are the most important part of my life, without a doubt. People make the difference. You know, I, I guess I should have a Walmart blue coat on because on the back it says, Our people make the difference. But that's really, really true. Think of all of you here in the classroom and the relationship that you've had in the probably I say 25 or 28 years that you've been alive. Which ones of those relationships have shaped, have molded, and have polished you from a piece of art into a masterpiece that you are today? And when you're, when you're 35 to 45, that's when you want to be in control of your life, not when you're 22 and 23. You want to build to that situation in a long life learning situation. I want to show you a couple of people that have really affected my life, if they'll come up. <laughs> Two years old learning how to dance. Do you know how they did that? 